Renfield is directed by Chris McKay and stars Nicholas Holt, Nicholas Cage, Aquafina, and among others. And in this story, it deals with the servant of Dracula known as Renfield, who throughout the centuries has served Dracula with bringing him victims for him to pretty much munch on. And in this story, it deals with the modern times where you have Renfield having to essentially try to escape the toxic relationship that's going on with him and Dracula. And a lot, it also involves where you have Aquafina having to solve this kind of uh, revenge type of plot that involves these mobsters. And now here's a little backstory. Now this movie was directed by Chris McKay, who I've only seen uh, just one of his other films. They did. He directed the Lego Batman movie, which I thought was really fun. You know, kind of spin on the whole Batman series and everything, especially in Lego form. And I haven't seen the Tomorrow War, but I've really enjoyed uh, the Bat the Lego Batman movie. And going into this movie, it got me really interested because growing up, I've always been an avid fan of Dracula um, throughout the different adaptations that they've used Dracula in going back even all the way up to the original 1931 film from Bela Lugosi, um, and just the different adaptations we've seen with Dracula and, and incarnations, including Bram Stoker's Dracula, uh, the Hammer films, everything, you know, from that kind of level. And when I heard they were kind of going with a more comedic type of feel where it's going to be focused more on Renfield as opposed to Dracula, it got me curious because I knew what they were kind of doing a spin on it, but the biggest thing for me the most was having the Cassian and Nicolas Cage. Uh, playing a Dracula because you know I've always I've always been an avid fan of Nicolas Cage over the years he's always been one of my favorite actors and he just has that kind of acting that I just always love seeing him in all kinds of films and the last time that he played a vampire well sort of was in Vampire's Kiss and that one if you've seen that film that shows that the guy just has so much you know talent being in that kind of over the top but really fun way that you see him in a lot of these movies like this and so him getting a chance to finally uh, play Dracula was a dream come true, and, and it really paid off. And after upon seeing the film, I can say that I had quite a lot of fun with it. There are some things that kind of hold it back from being really great, but I still thought it was a really great time. And so with to get my pros out of the way, the cast in this I thought were great. You know, Nicolas Cage is definitely steals every scene that he's in with playing Dracula, with you know having that very kind of, you know, the, the, the type of Nicolas Cage performance you expect him to play where he takes it he takes it to an overtop level where it may seem like it comes across as kind of campy and I can see that, and but that's really kind of what Nicolas Cage is known for. But he amps it up to where not only can he be very funny at times, but also the way that he plays it into the very kind of dark mood and very um, nuanced type of level in certain scenes really works too in a lot of cases. Um, and just a lot of, there's also some really great makeup that they do with him, like uh, with how he looks like Dracula. And it looks like, you know, seeing other versions that they've seen with other films, including, not going to spoil or, spoil or anything, but, well, if you've seen from the trailers, they actually incorporate Nicolas Cage into, well, the original 1931 Dracula. And I thought that was really captivating because he really is, you know, <laughs> you know, to this day, Nicolas Cage seems like he never ages, so I wouldn't be surprised if he's a vampire. <laughs> Um, and so he was great, but then also the the biggest one the most is definitely Nicholas Holt. You know, him being the title character and all, he really pulled off and not only the, the comedy chops that, you know, he really carries with the film and the really you really feel for the guy because he's really trying to escape the the relationship that's going on with him and Dracula with how he's trying to really get out of this toxic kind of feeling where, you know, he feels like he's basically kinda of like a prisoner for him. And, you know, he wants to try to do something else with his life. And one of the other things I thought was pretty clever with, when, especially at a certain point in the film, is they do actual spin on the lore of, uh, of Renfield in the movies, in the, in the adaptations of Dracula, that I thought really added a whole lot of cool stuff to the character that I've never seen before that comes into play, toward the, that comes into play later in the film. But I won't reveal that because it's a major spoiler. And him and I think Aquafina I thought really worked well with each other as well, and she was good in this too. And there's a, a kind of a pro and con with her character, but that has to do with more of the writing for the film. But I still think that you know they were great together, and she was really good too. Um, and then the rest of the cast are, are are good too as well, like Ben Schwartz. I've really really known him much when he's voicing Sonic. This is actually one of the few instances where I see him in live action for him. And I thought he was you know, fun at parts with him trying to be all Billy Badass with <laughs> being um, the head soldier of the crime family and stuff. And, uh, you know, he was he was great. He was fun to watch. And then the other biggest standouts for me the most, like going into the rest of the film, is the way that the, the, the film doesn't hold back with showing you everything that you expect with it being a gory vampire film. Finally, after so many years, um, I think this is actually the first R-rated vampire film 
that they've done that I saw in the theater since um, the remake of, of Fright Night. And well, I thought the fr remake of Fright Night was all right. Um, I thought this was definitely a lot, a lot of, a lot of, a lot more better than that. And it really takes its advantage with trying to really showcase. Not only are you seeing a lot of you know uh, people getting basically bit and stuff, but the detail they go into with this, where you're seeing like bodies like exploding and stuff. That really showcases a lot of what they they don't hold back on. And yeah, there are points where the CGI blood can get a little out there and crazy at times, but it still works to its advantage because it kept me really entertained throughout. And going into that, that also makes... I got a really good command with the direction in this with how they choreograph the fight scenes because there are some really badass fight scenes that I like seeing Nicholas Holt do um, in this film that they really... It really seems like something out of a Grindhouse film. Um, if they ever... If we lived in an alternate universe where if they wanted to go for like a 70s kind of like Grindhouse type of movie where if you remember from the fake trailer they had from Grindhouse where it showed uh, that was directed by Rob Zombie called Werewolf Women of the SS or whatever. Um, I think that's what it was called. That part where Nicolas Cage, Cage plays Fu Manchu. Now in alternate reality, could you imagine that we had it to where Nicolas Cage was actually in a Grindhouse film from the 70s and going on this kind of level? Uh, like, or sorry, that kind of 70s look to it and everything, that would really be awesome if that ever happened. Like, I, if they ever did a, um, another Grindhouse type of film that kind of like, you know, Planet Terror and Machete and all that, I would really love to see Nicolas Cage play in that kind of level where, you know, he just has, he goes so much crazy like he did in that trailer and also in this film. And there are a lot of fun stuff that I enjoy with a lot of the comedy in this. There are some things in the trailer I didn't really, I didn't really laugh too much in, but the way the movie was going along with a lot of other different jokes that land, they really work when they work. And some of it can be a little, you know, not so land at certain points, but it still made me, it got me into what I expect from this kind of humor. Now, if I do have to get into some of my cons, I will say that the one thing that did kind of hold the movie back quite a bit for me was the way that the plot kind of goes into this kind of cop type of crime drama or thriller type of vibe where it involves an Aquafina's character. And the reason I say that is because it seemed like the way that the direction was going, even though it does tie the two plots together, it felt like the scenes that involve, at least in the middle half, where you have Aquafina investigating this crime that's going on with these mobsters and stuff, it really seemed like that was basically, could have been in a different type of movie altogether, like a David Ayer movie or something, or in something that's more on the lines of, like, Training Day and stuff like that. Uh, or, you know, those, or, or movies from, like, the 90s that deal with, like, you know, people that are the moles inside of uh, the corrupt uh, police force and stuff that are going into plots like that. It's pretty much all the kind of cliches that you see in cop films that I think would only work better if it was done in one of those other films. Um, if it was made maybe 20 years ago or something. But seeing it in this film kind of wrapped together, it does work to, to some degree, but I feel like it does kind of take the tone away with some of the more major stuff of, of, what, we're not, of what we wanted to see from Renfield itself where you're trying to really you picture more of the, the relationship that builds more with uh, Renfield and Dracula, because I think that they don't really spend a whole lot of time with their relationship enough to really, you know, have too much focus into it. And so that is one of my major things I took away with it, uh, because even though it does start to get interesting as it goes along, especially toward the, the end, it starts to pick up. It felt like in that middle half, it seems like it was winding down because it was getting into this other plot that was going on with Aquafina, And so... It really seemed like if they would have just done it where I wouldn't say necessarily cut Aquafina out, but if you had it to where she was the direction was going where her and him are trying to you know lead into stuff that involves more with Dracula, I would bite that more and got me more invested with the way the story played out. There are some things that do seem a little convenient the way it plays away that you know you're you're trying to get into a certain point where things took a really dark turn. But I think that the way it played out, it could have been wrapped up better with that. Um, and so I did kind of have an issue with that toward the end, but I won't go into detail with it. But with it being a comedy, and because I had so much fun with it, there's a lot of things that really held the movie together for me. And so with that, I'm going to give the movie a very low, extremely low compelling score on the compelling grade on the Film Freaks meter. And so for those of you who have also seen Renfield, uh, let me know in the comments below what you thought about it. And thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next review. I'll see you later.